today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. We're on the precipice of maybe another major celebrity being outed for sexual harassment. Um, and this time it's a male on another male. What up? It's your boy, Trend Out Loud, and I'm back with another episode. Uh, it's a Monday. Just came off of a nice, chilled weekend. <clears throat> I'm still a little under the weather. I did a cute little podcast over the weekend about, uh, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say it was a cute little podcast. It was actually a movie review. I was at home and I was bored, so I wanted to give you guys a little something. I hope you liked it. But it's Monday. I'm back with a real Trend Out Loud episode. Get your snacks. Get your remotes. Turn your volumes up because I'm about to start this show. Let's go. All right. So first up to bat, we have to celebrate. I'm sorry. We have to congratulate Nicki Minaj. She has a number one album uh, in the country. And uh, not only that, but she has broken a bunch of records with this uh, with this album. Uh, let me read to you guys. Uh, Nicki Minaj is the first female rapper with a number one album in two different decades. Um, with this album, Nicki Minaj breaks her tie with Foxy Brown and now holds the crown for the most number one albums by a female artist. And what was good to see, because everybody's always saying that how women artists don't stand together and they're always beefing, Foxy Brown um, tweeted out this, or I don't know, or, or sorry, I think she put it on Instagram, but she goes, Hella proud, 26 year record has been broken. Y'all mean to tell me no? B words broke this ish um, in my app in my absence. It took my twin uh, to break the record. Um, anyway, so she sent it out her her congrats to Nikki. Um, Nikki and Foxy has always um, ha I've always been close, and their alliance is rooted in the fact that they both you know are beefing with Little Kim. So this is just Foxy Brown's way of of kind of just like putting herself back in in, in the limelight. And, um, you know, aligning herself with aligning herself with Nikki and, you know, indirectly throwing shade at, uh, at little Kim. But anyways, um, let's get back to these accolades. Uh, the first rap album, uh, sorry, the largest rap album week sales by a woman in 2020. So in this decade, this is the largest rap album by a female, which is super dope. Um, most vinyl sold, I don't even know they sell vinyl still, but they, she sold 25,000 copies of vinyl. Um, and, uh, her album sales were 228, uh, million, sorry, 228,000, uh, records sold two, uh, 1,000. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I told you guys I'm a little sick still 129,000 streams, 92,000 pure sales and 7,000 tracks. Uh, equivalent to um, an album. So shout out to Nicki Minaj. Uh, the queen of rap is back. And, um, you know, ironically, uh, now that she is back on top, she is taking time out to throw shade um, on some people, which I don't necessarily like love what she's doing. Um, uh, she kind of uh, took shots at DJ Envy because Envy was had blackballed her at one point, and now she's like, oh, now you guys want to talk about... She's taking shots of Envy and his house thing that he's dealing with, and it's like, why bring that up now, Nikki? Um, uh, Kanye West wanted her to um, to um, to clear her, her, uh, her vocals on a track, and she got online, and she was like, yo, Kanye, that, that, that ship has sailed. You know, she's taking shots at Elliot Wilson. I just, I just feel like... This is the kind of things that the, you know, unless you're a barb that Nikki does no wrong, these are the kind of things that kind of get her in trouble with the masses. And that's why she kind of gets this name as being hard to deal with. And I would have just loved for her to have enjoyed the weekend and just ride her accomplishments instead of sometimes getting in her own way and, you know, showing this that the the attitude side of her and i know she's a rapper and i know guys do this too but i don't like when guys do it either i just feel like let your work be the thing that proves people wrong so if you have beef with elliot you have beef with kanye you have beef with 
uh, with envy of beef or whoever you want. Like take the weekend and all these records that you just broke, let them all see this and who didn't support you and who was the haters before. That's the best revenge. You know what I mean? Is your success. So I just don't feel like she needed to couple all of that negative energy with this great weekend, but nevertheless, you know, shout out to Nikki. Um, I haven't actually listened to that album yet. I heard a few songs, but I haven't really sat down and digested the whole thing. Um, but I am going to listen to the album, but shout out to Nikki. I always say that Nikki is top 10, not only top 10 female rappers, but I think, I feel like Nikki is top 10 rappers of all time. Like she can, can, can hold her own in, in with anybody, um, from, from lyrics to delivery flow, all that. So I'm like, I'm, I'm a big Nikki fan. Uh, so don't take what I said before as that I don't like Nikki. I've always been a Nikki fan. I just think that she stands in her own way sometimes. But shout out to Nikki. Um, what, the name of the album is uh, Pink Friday 2. So if you haven't listened to it, go download it. Shout out to Nikki. Uh, Pink Friday 2. All right. Next up, we got um, uh, Kylie Jenner. No, sorry. Kylie. I never follow these people. Sorry. Kendall Jenner. Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny um, have reportedly broken up. Um, I don't know really what to say to this. I'm not a, I don't really follow the gender and the Kardashians. Um, but you know, it, it's headline news and I report, and I have an, uh, a podcast that reports entertainment news. So, um, I am a big fan of, of Bad Bunny though, but I don't know too much about their relationship. It always seemed like their, their relationship always seemed a little bit weird to me though, that I will say that. Like you saw them on the blogs and you kind of saw them out, but, I never like got a feel like they were together. I don't know if, if they just purposely kept their, their relationship out of the limelight, but I never really heard anything too much. I never, you know how we like, we see couples and we, you know, we fall in love with couples and, and then we get into their, their lives. I just felt, I just feel like, but just actually, I think Kendall in general really doesn't, live her life too out there i don't really know too much about her we know more about the kardashian sisters and about kylie um, but even when, like kylie and travis we were invested in that relationship i just feel like the bad bunny and 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 kendall relationship was just odd to me so i'm not surprised that they didn't last more than like six or seven months i think it was probably just like hey you're super famous i'm super famous let's maybe like it let's see how you know let's get these blogs talking like maybe it wasn't even really a real relationship i, I don't know but anyways for those of you who care out there Pat bunny and and kendall jenner are no longer together um my ne my next story is hilarious shout out to my boy cameron dipset yo harlem stand up i love this story um so okay for those of you who don't know i'll, I'll paint the background so uh for, first of all hold on i'm getting excited let me tell you so cameron and nia long were at rich paul's party together um and they took a picture and it's gone viral on the internet now let me give you the backstory to this so cameron has a podcast with mace um and on his podcast he revealed that he um, had a crush on Nia Long and he sent D Nia Long a DM, um, but she never answered. So it went viral. It was, he, it started out with like, Hey, stink. What, why is he calling her stink? We have no idea, but it's like, Hey, I know that, you know, um, your ex-husband, uh, uh Im Imidoka, I always pronounce his name wrong. You guys know I'm bad with names, but Iman Imidoka, um, anyways, uh, that you guys broke up and I know you're single now and he cheated on you and yo, you did him dirty, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, nobody, she, she never responded and nobody said anything about it. It was just Cam shooting his shot. And now, um, this weekend, Rich Paul, who's LeBron James's manager at a party. But the, the funny thing about the story is, is that LeBron James and the Long's ex, he is the coach of the Houston Rockets. LeBron James and him, um, and Idam Imadoka, sorry, I'm messing up the name again, but LeBron and Nia Long's ex-wife had a, had a, had a beef on the court the other day and he called LeBron a little B word. Okay. So follow me here now. So Rich Paul, LeBron James's manager. So they want to get back at Idam Imadoka now, the, 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 the coach. So what they did is invited Cameron to Rich's party and set up the picture so that Cameron and Nia Long could be together so they could go viral so that 
her ex who cheated on her keeps like, oh my gosh, maybe now she's sleeping with Cam or fooling around with Cam. So everybody's thinking that LeBron and Rich Paul did that to get back at Idam Imadoka, which is friggin' hilarious. But the winner in all of this is Cameron because nobody thought that Cam would ever get any sort of attention back from Nia Long. But so who knows? I mean, I really think they're just trolling. I, I, I'm sure they just set that picture up to get the internet talking and there's nothing else going on but who knows you know um and then they wrote let me see what they wrote underneath uh um nia long wrote nice meeting you cameron happy birthday rich paul and then cameron wrote uh he want the scoop she needs she hold on he wants the scoop she wants the tea i can't not talk we keeping it street i don't know if i'm rapping that right but he wants the scoop she wants the tea I cannot talk. We keep it street. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. But anyway, shout out to Cam. Um, for those of you who are not following, um, uh, whoever those who are not watching this on YouTube, go to YouTube. I have all the pictures up and all the, you know, the details to, uh, to the story. But anyways, I thought that was uh, hilarious. Shout out to Harlem. Shout out to Cam. Uh, next story is Kodak Black is back in jail Yo, could somebody, I just don't understand, man. Kodak was um, pardoned by Donald Trump. And since then, he has continued to still get himself um, in trouble. He was just in Miami um, at the uh, listening party with Kanye West. And, you know, every time we see Kodak, he seems high out of his mind. But if this guy has gotten a pardon and got let out of prison, how is this guy always, it feels like he's getting arrested like every month and he's always getting off somehow, some way. But now it's looking like he might not get out this time because now he's in federal prison. And I don't know the details. I know it's cocaine possession or whatever, but it's like, why doesn't somebody on his team get this man some help? Like, I love Kodak, man. Like, he's such a dope artist. I just don't understand how his team can continuously see him getting in trouble like this. Like, I don't understand. Like, I, I'm not saying that this is a good solution, but why doesn't somebody else hold the drugs? Like, I don't understand. Like, why is, like, why don't they put it in another car? Why is it always in his car, or always on him? Now, the flip side, to be fair, I understand if somebody is an addict, there's only so much you could do. But this is not like an addict that's, you know, your cousin from around the way or somebody that don't have the resources. Like, this guy's a multimillionaire. Like, I just, I don't know, man. I feel bad for the kid. Like, I, I understand dealing with an addict is, is very hard. But I, I oh, there's, there's got to be someone somewhere that could help this kid out, man. And either A, like, have, if he is doing drugs, like, handle it better right like have somebody else take the risk but then more importantly get this kid some help man like he is a big promising superstar and he is going to end up in jail and and just never going to be able to you know fulfill his destiny and, and and hold his place like in the rap world and it's just really sad man like it feels like a like a dmx situation to me but i don't even feel like dmx was was arrested this much especially at this age you know but anyways man Shout out to Kodak, sending our love out to him, but somebody somewhere, please help this kid, man. Um, all right, our next story, um, actor Christian Keys, um, actor Christian Keys alleges that he was sexually harassed for years by a powerful man in Hollywood. Uh, here's a clip. I'm not sure, you know, based on this person's claims and, and brags, um, that he's literally got at the same time this person was sexually sexually harassing me for years. I've done my best to forgive this person, but it happens. It happens. Um, it's not just women that have to deal with it, but it's also men sometimes, and it'll be men tempting men. So this feels to me like, like, like Christian is like, Hey, I see all of these people exposing 
you know, these Hollywood elite people. Um, and now he's coming out with his own allegations, but not dropping the name. So it feels like to me, like he's sending a message to whoever this person is, either A, like, pay me or B, like just giving you a heads up. Like I just, I feel like this might turn into something. Um, and Claudia Jordan also, um, I think she tweeted this, but she put out that she's been friends with Chris, Christian and he has told her this uh, 15 years ago. Um, and he's always tried to, you know, shield and, and, and hide this person. Um, and he always vowed like one day to, to maybe speak up. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I feel like, we're on the precipice of maybe another major celebrity being outed for sexual harassment. Um, and this time it's a male on another male. So this might be one of the first times that we have, uh, you know, a gay uh, sexual harassment allegation. But I'm interested to see what's going to come of, come of it. Everyone's looking for the cash out. So I, I feel it in my heart that I think Christian is probably doing this to, to give this person a warning. And it's like, yo, pay me now. Um, you know, which, sorry, pay me now, uh, you know, before, you know, I out you and, and put your name out there. Um, but again, like I always say, whenever I talk about these sexual harassment allegations is what I don't understand is that where are the criminal charges and, and when I do talk about this, I always say I can't be the one to tell somebody who's been sexually harassed how to deal with their their pain. And there's the argument online of like, hey, if you're really harassed, then send the person to jail so it doesn't happen to somebody else. But then there's other people that are like, hey, get your money and get your pay. You can't tell somebody how to react from their own pain. But I just I I, I just don't understand how. There's nobody out there with these sexual harassments that are looking to bring charges. And, and why can't you bring both? Why can't it be a civil suit and a criminal suit? Like, I still don't understand. So I'm, I'm very interested to see um, what's going to come of this. Um, all right. Next up, we have Mr. Kanye West. Kanye West, um, I, I, I tweeted, tweet, sorry, I posted about this um, over the weekend because I don't do a podcast on Friday. But um, Kanye West is back in the news. He uh, was in Vegas, had uh, his listening party. I'll play a little clip. My Farrakhan Don shit right now, bro. Because guess what? These Yeezys going to sell. Yeah. They, they sabotaged the show today. They sabotaged the Instagram. They cut off the fucking Adidas contract. They did all the shit. Then they want to go get Light Skin Yay. You got to say it. That's Jerry. His real name is Light Skin Yay, bro. <laughs> get out. Told me that was his name. It's light skin gay. They want the light skin version. They want a George Floyd. They want a Virgil. Then like then don't let me speak at the funeral. I saw two, three, four, five white people not let me speak in further. None of y'all niggas and Drake. Hold on, hold on. Be quiet while I'm talking, baby. So it's typical Kanye ranting. But but what I um, posted on my IG and what I wanted to to bring to people's attention is we are on. The uh, we are witnessing Kanye West um, about to change, try to change things in the music industry and the fashion industry. Um, and the week before that, him in Miami putting out uh, his music, having a listening party. Um, and then now he released his first product um, uh, post Adidas relationship. It's a sock. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, and he released that it's a $200 sock. Um, it has a little bit of a base to it. Um, and, um, I'm sure it's going to sell out, but what I'm, what I said in my post, which some people agreed to me and didn't agree with me is that Kanye West now has no more ties to corporate America. There's no more of the, the structure behind him, like the music label, the, um, Adidas, none of, none of that structure, but if Kanye West comes out and sells 10% of what he sold, he'll make the same amount of money. Let me explain. His contract with Adidas, he got 11% of sales. So if they did a billion dollars in sales of Yeezys, he got $111,000 uh, 111, million, right? Yeah, 100, let's just keep it easy, okay? $100 million. So a billion, let's say it's 10%, okay? So he got... They sold a billion, he got a hundred, a hundred million. 
So him on his own with his own Yeezy company, and if he manufactures and distributes and he gets 100% of the profits, he only has to sell 100 million. He only has to sell you know, 10% or even let's say there's a cost, the, the small manufacturing cost. He maybe have to sell 150 or even, even if this, to say he only has to sell 200 million um, dollars worth of Yeezys to make the same amount of money. And I think that will change the game. If he could show that he can leave a big, you know, a manufacturing company like Adidas or, and or a record label, and he could put all his stuff out independent and make the same amount of money or more money, it will change the entire game completely. And Kanye West is one of the only people that could do that. And it will just show the next generation that you don't need to go to these labels or these fashion styles and you could grow, you know, um, independently and make more money that way. So I I'm not saying 100% he's going to do it, but if anybody could do it, it is Kanye because he is, he's always been very independent, you know, making his own line. You see Travis Scott, he signs to Jordan, but he's putting out an, an existing Jordan shoe. Kanye has always put out his own shoe. Yes, with Nike, it was it was based on some, you know, Nike heritage, but it was still his own design. Um, and then with Yeezy, um, with Adidas, he really made his own design. So I'm just excited from a business standpoint and me being in the fashion industry and music industry for 20 years. I'm excited to see somebody, whether you like him or not. And I'm, I'm what I said also to in the post is that I don't agree with a lot of the stuff he does. I'm still very upset of the slavery was a choice and the white life matter shirt. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm taking Kanye, the person out of this and just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for the independent side and not having to be so heavily dependent on, uh, on these big brands and big labels. And I would like to see, um, somebody, uh, not, not have to go through that route and go through the, through the independent route. It would be good, enough, good, for all of us. So I'm excited to see what Kanye does with that. Mark Zuckerberg um, is building, let me get the details. Mark Zuckerberg is building a bunker in Hawaii. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg reportedly building top secret compound in Hawaii equipped with an escape hatch, blind doors and underground bunker. I'll put the pictures up on, on YouTube. Um, and it's like, if you guys watched uh, Leave the World Behind, um, I just did a review on it. You should check it out. Episode, I think it's 136. Um, in Leave the World Behind, uh, the owner of the Airbnb, uh, he was saying that his, his, his client gave him a heads up and was shifting around money because he got a little bit of a heads up that there's going to be this big um, attack happening. Um, so we all... You know, there's two theories, right? Or it's like these 20 people run the world and they do things in the world to make money and they let all their other rich friends know. So I just feel like it's kind of weird timing that that movie just came out. And, you know, it's hinting about like rich people know when like the world's coming to an end or they know when there's like, you know, a big attack coming. So I just find it weird that at this time now, Mark Zuckerberg is building a bunker and he's, you know, having has an escape hatch like what does mark zuckerberg know that we don't know i just want to put you guys on alert first we have leave the world behind as a hint and now mark zuckerberg is building a bunker just be careful you guys go out and make sure you guys got extra toilet paper and extra water because something is coming yo i don't know what but something's on the way all right uh this brings us to our question of the day um do you have to be cool with your partner's family? Um, hold on. There's a little piece here that I need to read. Um, I think this was just by a random person. Um, I'm not marrying into a family that doesn't like me. If I go to my man's family function and his mom, aunts, sisters, and cousins are, are being weird to me, I'll leave him alone. I don't care how long we've been together. Well, first of all, like, you should know if your family um, likes you or not. If you're sorry, if your in-laws like not your in-laws, but you should know if your partner's family likes you within the first couple of months. Like I, I found that weird. More importantly, my opinion on this is, um, I feel like you, like I agree with the person. Like family, you you cannot say. Oh, sorry, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to read some of the comments. 
some of the comments say, nah, I don't care. Family be, be weird. Nah, I don't care. Family be weird sometimes. Girl, bye. My in-laws are Asians. They were against my man marrying anyone outside of his race. Well, he married me and I'm the first black person in the family. Uh, marry the, and then another person said, marry the person, not the family. Bible says a man leaves his mom and clings to his wife. And then another person said, facts, but more so not marrying a man that allows his family to disrespect you. Look, my opinion on this is that you absolutely are marrying the family. You're not just marrying the person. And not only if the family likes you, I feel like it goes deeper than that. Not only do uh, do I want them to like me? We have to have our own relationship outside of my partner. Like, for example, I would want my wife's my wife's mom and I to have like a a, a son mom relationship. Like, I want to walk in, I want to call her mom, I want to hug her, I want to pick her up. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I want to buy her things on Mother's Day. I want her to call me her second son or call me her son in law. I want, and the same thing with the dad. I want to have a great relationship with my girl's dad. Like, that's super important to me. And brothers and sisters, like that's your, why why do you think they're called your in-laws? That's my brother-in-law. Like you have to have a brother and sister relationship, a mom and dad relationship. Now, it doesn't have to be as close as your own families, but that's very important to me, a hundred thousand percent, because not only for me, but also for my kids, we're going to have kids and he's going to go, he or she goes to that side of the family and not feel loved or not feel welcome. No, the families have to at minimum, get along with each other and like each other for the kid's sake, or that's just going to be a weird dynamic for the children. Second point is not only do we have to get along, I feel, my opinion, that I would like my partner's family to match my values and my family values. I know a lot of you are probably going to say that it's a lot, but if I like a girl and I don't feel like her family's values meet my values, well, first of all, probably nine times out of 10, then that means the girl's values are not going to match mine because her values probably come from her parents. But let's just say, you know, that, that you know, she's the black sheep of the family and her and I values match. Like, I'm not going to marry, like, I want to choose my words wisely here, but I just... I have certain goals and aspirations, and so does my family. My family came up here from Jamaica. Both my parents' parents were struggled when they came up here. They both, you know, got jobs and brought other members of the family from Jamaica up to Canada. They're all homeowners, uh, you know, made something of themselves, got an education, got a job, whatever. It's like if my family came up from Jamaica, a third world country with nothing, and came to Canada and made something of themselves, um, something respectable, I'm not going to marry into a family that doesn't match those same ideals. I don't have to get into any other details. I'm sure you can imagine what I'm saying, but I just feel like my family has a certain set of values. I want my wife's family to not have identical, but some sort of, you know, the some sort of similarities um, with our values for my kids, because my kids are not always going to be with my side of the family. So maybe I might be looking too much into this. And every time I talk about relationship stuff, I always say, don't take my advice because I am single. But now you guys know why I'm so single is because my my choice for my partner, it's not only them and the, the scrutiny that they have to go through, but also their family and their values and stuff. So no, man, you're marrying and having kids for me. That's the biggest contract that you'll ever get into in your life. And there's things that I need in my contract. And Yo, family is a big, big, big one. Um, and lastly, we are bringing back to the show uh, a sport, the, a sport section. Uh, you know, I do have a sport sponsor, so I got to talk about some sports. But uh, with Sunday night football yesterday, or Sunday day football and Sunday night, uh, you know, my league is the AFC. I love the AFC. Things are getting super, super tight. Uh, my team, Kansas City, won. Thank the Lord. Um, I mean. It's nothing really to brag about. They beat New England. I mean, really, who cares? Um, but uh, the game that really got me upset was Baltimore um, and Jacksonville. and Because if Baltimore would have lost, that would have increased um, Kansas City's chances of being number one in the AFC. And Jacksonville got within the 40 of Baltimore four times and didn't score a point. Their kicker missed 
two field goals. Um, at the end of the half, they were on the fourth yard line with eight seconds left, and they throw a pass, and the, the guy caught it in bounds with like four seconds left, and they didn't have any timeouts. Like, I'm so upset. Jacksonville, I'm not saying they for sure could have won the game because, you know, Baltimore is an amazing team, but they could have had a better chance, man. They totally ruined it, and now it puts pressure back on um, Kansas City, and Kansas City might have to be playing on the road all the way through the playoffs. This will be Patrick Mahomes' first time um, playing on the road. A little part of me is not really upset because I actually feel like this year he needs to be challenged and he needs to be pushed. He's super competitive, so it might bring something out of him. So I, but, but, but if you know, if you want your team to go to the Super Bowl, you want them to have all the advantages. So you want them to have a bye week and you want them to have, um, all the playoffs on their home, um, on their home field. So, um, it's not over yet for Kansas City. Um, Baltimore and Miami play, uh, I think not next week, but the week after. So Baltimore and Miami both have difficult schedules for the last three weeks and, um, Kansas City has easy, an easier schedule. So, it's possible that Miami, uh, that, that Kansas City still finishes first place. But regardless, I'm still going for Kansas City. I still feel they'll make it into the Super Bowl. These receivers are horrible and still dropping catches. Um, Travis is still not playing like, like how he used to. I don't know if it's, if it's Taylor Swift. I don't know if it's his relationship, but please, Kansas City, get y'all act together. I need you guys in the Super Bowl. I want it to be Philly and Kansas City rematch so Kansas City could bust Philadelphia's butt and people could stop saying that Kansas City won just off of that penalty. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, turn out loud. Go to signupexpert.com forward slash Trent. And then once you sign up for all betting apps, and get all your bonuses and get all your rewards. Go to your app store and download BetStamp and use promo code TOL.